Yesterday we started the third chapter in geography or the second book and that was about the drainage system. I talked about some of the basic terms that should be very clear before starting the chapter so that there would be no difficulty in understanding the topics that we will be discussing in the coming periods. Today I will be starting my discussion with the important drainage patterns. There are several types of drainage patterns and yesterday I told you what drainage patterns are. Well, uh, there is a continuous joining of smaller rivers with the bigger rivers which makes the river bigger and bigger in size and volume. This way of joining of the smaller rivers or the tributary rivers with the main river is different in different regions and it depends on the landscape, the, the soil type and other factors also, joints and cracks in the rocks and like that there are several factors. But the thing is that the rivers do not join with each other in the same way at every place. The way of joining is different. Sometimes the rivers join, the smaller rivers, the tributary rivers join with the main river in a diagonal way. Sometimes they join it at right angles. Sometimes following the joints and cracks of the rocks. So when the tributary rivers or the smaller rivers join the main river diagonally, and if we observe it from a altitude, it will appear as if the smaller rivers are joining the bigger river in a pattern which resembles like a branch of a tree. This type of, of uh, drainage pattern is called dendratic drainage pattern. That is a very important drainage pattern and that is typical of the Indogangetic plain and flat plains or the flat plains. There is another type of drainage pattern which is normally seen on conical hills where whatever rainfall takes place that uh, from that the rivers originate and flow in different direction from the hilltop and it resembles like uh, the rivers resemble like spokes in the wheel radiating out from the central position, which is the top of the hill. This type of drainage pattern, which is normally seen in conical hills, that is called radial drainage pattern. There is another drain drainage pattern, which we call centripetal drainage pattern. It is just reverse of the radial drainage pattern. In the radial drainage pattern, the rivers uh, originate from the hilltops and flows in different directions of the hilltops which appears like the rivers are radiating out from the central position to different directions. But there are also topographic features which might be having uh, hills surrounding a low-lying area. So when the rainfall takes place, rivers from the different hilly areas radiate out from there and comes and joins comes and drains its water in the in the middle part this type of drainage part is this type of drainage type or drainage pattern is called centripetal drainage pattern the radial drainage pattern is also called centrifugal drainage pattern because the rivers radiate out from the central location to other directions. Whereas in those topographical region which is surrounded by hills from all sides or at least from three sides, the rivers flow out from the hilltops to the intermediary low-lying region and the water gets collected over there and from there the rivers move out uh, to other lower areas. This type of drainage pattern that develops that is called centripetal drainage pattern. There is another drainage pattern which we call trellis drainage pattern and here 
the rivers, the smaller rivers join the bigger river uh, at right angles. In the dendritic drainage pattern, I told you that the rivers join at right angles. Whereas in the trellis drainage pattern, the rivers join at at right angles. In the dendritic drainage pattern, the rivers join at diagonally with each other. Whereas the trellis drainage pattern, the rivers join at right angles. It might be there might be various reasons. It might be there might be parallel layers of soft and hard rocks which may lead to formation of this type of drainage pattern or it might be because of joints and cracks present in the rocks which slowly develop into the course of the river that may also be the reason but whatever the reason might be the thing is that the rivers join the smaller rivers join the bigger rivers at right angles and that type of drainage pattern that develops that we call trellis drainage pattern but when the rivers join diagonally with each other and that which makes the whole a uh, river pattern resemble like a branch of a tree that we call dendritic drainage pattern centripetal and centrifugal i have already explained to you that when the rivers originate from a hilly area and radiate in different directions out from the uh, hilly areas this type of drainage pattern is normally seen in conical hills that is called a uh, centrifugal drainage pattern or radial drainage pattern because it radiates, the river radiates from a central location to a different directions. Then centripetal centri uh, uh, drainage pattern where the rivers flow towards a common center because of the topography uh, is such that is uh, that surrounds a central region uh, by the formation of hills all around it. And so the rivers that comes out from the hill that uh, drains it water in the central location central area and that we call century petal drainage pattern so these are some of the important drainage pattern that you should know besides we also need to talk about uh, uh, the drainage systems we divide the drainage system on various basis first of all on the basis of discharge of water the volume of water that is discharged on that basis uh, we identify the Indian rivers as the Arabian Sea drainage and the Bay of Bengal drainage. There is another basis also that is on the basis of the size of watershed. On that basis, we identify river basins as major river basins, medium river basins and minor river basins. Size of water means size of catchment area for the river from where it gets water there is another basis that is the mode of origin nature and characteristics well on that basis we identify the indian rivers as uh, the himalayan drainage system and the peninsular drainage system so there are different bases uh, on which we divide the indian drainage system now on the basis of discharge of water as I told you that uh, we identify the Bay of Bengal drainage uh, system and uh, the Arabian Sea drainage system. You know that the rivers that flow in our country either drain their water in the Arabian Sea or the Bay of Bengal. Those which drain into the Arabian Sea we call them west flowing rivers and those which drain their water in the Bay of Bengal we identify them as uh, east flowing rivers. There is a water divide which separates the flow of the rivers and this separation is through the water divide which is identified with the Delhi Ridge, the Ravalis and the Shayadris which separate the east flowing and the west flowing rivers of our country. Nearly about 77% of the drainage area which consists of the Ganga, Brahmaputra, Mahanadi, the Krishna and Kaveri also is oriented towards the Bay of Bengal while only 23% which comprises of the Indus, the Narmada, the Tapi, Mahi, Periyar system discharge their water in the Arabian Sea. So that is the identification of river systems on the basis of the discharge of water. So if someone asks you that which uh, 
drainage system is bigger. The Arabian Sea drainage system or the Bay of Bengal drainage system, I hope it is clear to you now. On the basis of size of watershed, we identify rivers, river basins into three types and that is major river basins, medium river basins and minor river basins. Those river basins which have a catchment area more than 20,000 square kilometers that we call major river basins. For example, the Ganga, the Brahmaputra, the Krishna, Tapi, Narmada, Mahi, Pinar, etc. These are included in the group of major river basins. Whereas those river basins which have a catchment area between 2000 to 20,000 square kilometers, these are identified as medium river basins. And those river basins, the smaller rivers, which have a catchment area of less than 2000 square kilometers, we identify them as minor river basins. On the basis of the mode of origin also and nature and characteristics, we identify Indian drainage as the Himalayan drainage system and the peninsular drainage system. We will be discussing about these things, especially we will be identifying the rivers as the Himalayan drainage systems and the peninsular drainage system and we will be discussing the different rivers that flow in our country whether they are east flowing or the west flowing rivers and we will be discussing about them in the coming classes.